Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Marantz and the model number is PM7200. In terms of general specifications the output power in class AB mode is 95 watts RMS and that's 2 times 8 ohm speakers and you can select via the front panel class A mode and that was 25 watts RMS into 2 times 8 ohms. Now on the rear you have dual speaker connections and again you can select between speaker set 1 and 2 both of them on or if you're just using the headphone jack socket then both of them can be turned off. As with many amplifiers you have the ability to switch out the tone control circuits and that again is selectable from the front fascia with a source direct mode. Frequency response is coming in at 20 Hz to 20 kHz and total harmonic distortion is 0.03%. You can connect a moving magnet type cartridge if you're connecting a record player and that's standard at 2.5 millivolts. And then for all of the other inputs you're looking at 150 millivolts. Overall dimensions is 440 by 159 tied by 275.4 millimeters and the weight of the amplifier comes in at 12.3 kilograms. When the amplifier is new you also will receive a remote control so this amplifier is fully microprocessor based. So there's one thing that I want to sort of draw to your attention which is just what we're seeing here on the on the rear panel before we sort of get into what the fault issue was and what the rectification to get the amplifier back to normal operation. What I've done here is I've just circled these input RCA sockets and you can see the word above there says processor. You may think that there is a fault because you don't appear to have output only maybe if you select the CD direct mode. You always have to have links installed during test phase or normal operation if you're not connecting another maybe amplifier to the pre-amplifier output stage. The other thing that I'm doing and you can see here on the tape in out I'm just put a small arrow and what I'm pointing to is one of the screw holes and you may wonder well what's the significance of that. Well the significance is if you look there is no paint and what's very very important is that these amplifiers have a common ground which connects different parts of the circuit boards and you need to have the screws inserted now if you look at the speaker terminals you'll see exactly the same thing so again there are grounding points and what I would advise to do here is that you need to install those speaker grounding point screws if you're going to be testing the amplifier and powering up. What you don't want to do is just remove the back panel and then you're doing some fault finding and then you power up the amplifier without the back panel on. Because of the common ground connection you could cause damage to the amplifier. So let's talk for a moment about what was the issue with the amplifier when it came in. Well the customer contacted me after seeing the previous repair tutorial on the YouTube channel for a PM7200 and I've put the link in the description below. Now what I'm highlighting here is the input circuit board. So when we saw a moment ago the back panel, well once that's removed what you see here are the ARCA input sockets. And then just to the right hand side you can see these red coloured blocks and those are input selection relays. And then just to the right of that you can see that there is a flex connector. And that flex connector comes directly from the microprocessor board which is located on the front control board. And the command signals depending on which input selection relay needs to operate depend on which input channel the user has selected. And then you can also see what I've done is I've put a circle around a multi-pin connector. Now that multi-pin connector is where the audio, depending on which channel of course, is selected is then routed then into the remaining part of the amplifier. So it's going to go to the volume control, tone control circuits, pre-amplifier stages and then of course through to the power amplifier. Now what is a very very common issue with all of these amplifiers is multiple dry solder joints. Now often I speak about this in the re previous repair tutorials. Now if you have a fault on an amplifier then of course the part of the process is to try and identify what the fault is and then rectify it to fix the issue. But you need to have a base point or a good reference point to begin. Now because we know historically that all of these amplifiers always have dry solder joints the first thing that you need to do is really to reflow each one of these circuit boards. If you don't do that and you just go chasing after a fault you will waste a huge amount of time and you may not actually cure the problem because in most cases the problem could be related to the dry solder joints on multiple components. But on say the PM44 amplifier 
If you get dry joints on the main amplifier board, what will happen then is maybe on the pre-driver stage, it will actually blow the output transistors. For this amplifier, I've not seen any come in with that type of fault. Even if there are multiple solder joints, it doesn't appear to blow the fuse. But of course, what will happen is, you know, the speaker protection may not operate or you may have maybe loss of sound in one channel. So really the next series of photographs which I'm showing now is really just zooming in. So you can see here a zoom in view of the audio connection. And then if you wanted to sort of just verify if the audio was coming through, then you could use an oscilloscope or in my case, I just use an audio signal tracer. So you have the ground for the right and left and then the audio signal left and right. And you can quickly verify, as I said, if the audio signal is coming through and you've got it on both channels. Now what the customer said was that they had an issue with the right channel, really there was no output and it was distorted. What I found during the initial test phase before I got into doing all of the reflowing of the circuit boards, I actually found on the left hand channel no audio at all on some of the inputs. So here again we're just stepping through and then what I'm showing next is the multiple dry solder joints. So this is the RCA input sockets and I've just drawn some circles around them and I'm telling you there will literally be hundreds throughout an amplifier like this because there are a lot of solder connections both on the amp board, power supply board, tone board, speaker selection stroke, head phone board and all of the input and you can't skimp this work you've got to examine each one of the solder joints and then reflow them so this one here where you had the loss of sound on the left channel that's because what you're seeing is that the RCA socket has broken away from the circuit board now this is common because there's mechanical stress and also there's really a lack of solder during manufacture but remember this can also be age related that the solder starts to break down and you get joints cracks around it or there may be more heavier components or maybe there is heat related issues as well. And then here what you can see is the input RCA board has been lifted up but then you have the secondary board which is where you see the tape input. And again you've got to make sure that each one of those circuit boards is lifted up and you do all of the reflowing of the solder joints. There's no sort of short circuit to this. You know you can't say okay well I'll just do some of the boards but not some of the other boards. You have to do every single one including the front microcontroller board, you'll often find on there some dry solder joints. And then here what I'm showing you is the main amplifier board. So what you can see now is the main amplifier board and what the customer reported was that really there was a lack of audio, as I said, which was on the right hand channel. And what you were also hearing as well was some level of distortion. So what I've done here, and you can see that there is a circle around what looks like a large white component, and this is one of the emitter resistors on the right channel. Now it's just a quick test so what I was interested to understand was is there an issue with the output stage? So I'm just connecting the multimeter set to DC millivolts and I'm just checking to see you know what's the bias current and there was actually no current flowing whatsoever so that told you that the output stage was not being biased on so hence the distortion that the customer was hearing. So to remove this board is relatively straightforward and the good thing is that you have multiple pin connectors. And then here what I'm showing you is that circuit board removed and it's on the bench. And then what you can see on left and right, these are the large audio output transistors. And then the smaller ones in between are the driver transistors. And then if we go zoom in, what you can see here is a close up view of the circuit board. And what's really interesting is you see here, and I've zoomed in even more, you can see these dry solder joints. I'll put some circles around them. And what has happened there is that those three P components are actually transistors within the circuit. And what's happened is that they've broken away from the circuit board. Now the customer had already carried out some degree of work from the communication that I received. And what he'd advised was he'd actually replaced the speaker output protection relays. And the relays that were fitted were very high quality. So there was no concerns there. What this board required was not only reflowing, but you also have to deflux the boards as well. You, you often find, particularly around the large power transistors, you could find quite a large degree of flux. So I just use a flux cleaner and then you can just use maybe an old toothbrush and then just brush it away. And then here on the next photograph, even more dry solder joints. So this is both on the right and on the left and you have to be meticulous. What I would advise people to do is, first of all, don't be in a rush to solder all of the board. Always verify your work. Double check to make sure that you've got all of the solder joints reflowed. And the critical part about rechecking your work is just to ensure that you don't have, for example, any accidental solder bridges. And that's quite common. You know, it can occur when you're doing maybe resoldering of input connection sockets or maybe multi-pin ICs that have got dry solder joints. And the important thing there is if you just keep verifying your work, 
hopefully once you've done all of the reflowing when you put the amplifier back together and then do a test then you should have no further issues this circuit board that i'm showing you and it's maybe easy to miss this is the speaker protection or the protection board and it plugs directly into the main power amplifier board and again if we zoom in and you can see i'll put a small arrow there are multiple dry solder joints on the connector where it plugs into the board and also the speaker protection ic and then the next board that you're seeing this is the headphone socket and then also the selection board now you'll often find dry solder joints the reason for the headphone jack socket is again it's mechanical so there's quite a lot of stress that gets put onto those solder joints and uh, because the solder is quite sparse then it just cracks and then comes away from the board and then here what we're doing is we're just showing you a top view and uh, this is the power supply for the amplifier and you can see this smaller transformer so this transformer is a startup transformer and just to the left hand side you can see that there's a power relay so that energizes via the microprocessor which in turn will then provide the power directly to the large ei type power transformer which you'll see later in a zoomed in view and then that will initialize the amplifier to start up and it's important with that circuit board to remove it you know when you spin it over because those very very large electrolytics are there often you'll find that there's some cracking around there and then here from this shot you can see the bridge rectifier is mounted onto the smaller heatsink and then you can also see the power relay and this comes into operation when you're selecting between class a and class a b mode and you just need to verify again no dry solder joints with this amplifier i didn't find any issue with the switching contacts of the power relays and so no oxidization but maybe on another unit which has been used extensively you may need to open that relay up and then just clean off oxidization from the contacts and that just avoids any future issues and then the next thing that i'm doing here is i'm just zooming in and so you can see that the large ei transformer is there you also have on the left hand side the power supply rear view which is the power amplifier stage and preamps and then on the right hand side you can see the input switching and then also just out of view is where you have your headphone jack and then socket and then here this is where you can see vertically mounted so what you see here is this is the preamp stage of the amp stroke tone control and then the vertical board you can just make it out that's the volume control potentiometer now part of the repair and service work not only to check all the dry joints as we keep saying but you'll need to spray into those switches and those potentiometers deoxy and then just rotate them or operate the switches multiple times just to clean off any oxidization here there wasn't any crackling noise and i would imagine that's because the owner had already carried out that work but it was still done and then here we're just doing a top view and the reason why i'm highlighting this is that we're going to speak about in a moment the alignment procedure for the amplifier so if you look where you can see they look, almost look like sort of bronze covers i've just done two circles now those presets there or preset potentiometers where you see the audio input signal coming in on the gray wires then with the multi-pin connector those presets are used to set the dc offset so this is where you will connect your multimeter to the rear speaker terminals of course select the output from the front fascia i.e if you're on speaker set terminal a or b and then what you're doing there is you're looking to measure what is the offset and then you would then adjust those presets to bring it back to factory alignment and then the other presets which have been circled and actually written onto the board is where you will adjust the bias when you are in a b mode and then when you select class a again you will then do the adjustment and what i've done here is i've just provided an extract from the service manual and you can see here that what i was referring to before so this is the dc offset so you really need to get that down to zero millivolts or as close as you possibly can as i mentioned in other tutorials sometimes these sort of single turn presets can be quite twitchy or maybe they're not clean because they've got dirt and grime which has accumulated over time so with the amplifier turned off there's nothing wrong with just spraying the presets with the oxid and just rotate them backwards and forwards just to clean the carbon track and then return them back to the original position and then continue on with your alignment normally you'll power up the amplifier and if you leave it running for about 20 minutes then it should stabilize through and then the first thing that you need to do is to set the bias for when the amplifier is in class a b mode and what you are doing here is is that you are measuring across the emitter resistors and then you will adjust the preset until it is 18 millivolts and then once you've done that of course for each channel you then press the button on the front and then you can then select class a mode and what you will find is that it will increase and again you're looking to set the bias then until you read 90 millivolts 
Now for this amplifier, it was running high, but not unusually high. It can increase just because of the aging of the components and just drifting of electronic circuits over time. But if you carry out the work, all the dry solder joints, and then you're restoring the amplifier, you know, after you clean the potentiometers, the final task really is doing the alignment. Take your time and then just do the adjustment. And then what you'll find is you restore it back to factory condition then. So really not a complicated repair as such. I would say it is time consuming. So that really brings us to the end of this repair tutorial. I do appreciate you stopping by. And as always, if you need any help, guidance or assistance, you can email audio amplifier servicing at AR.com and I'll be more than happy to provide any help, support or guidance you may require. So until the next time, I wish you all the very best. Cheers and bye bye.